so what is bile? Let's talk a little bit more about bile, what it is, what all of its major functions are. Yeah, so bile essentially is a detergent. Um, so this is really cool to think about. Um, I always love these interviews, just love to see where the host like yourself wants to take this. But if you think about, you know, when you take a supplement, it's got to go through a pretty rough environment before you can actually absorb it. If you eat food, it's got to go through a pretty rough environment before you absorb it. That rough environment is stomach ache. Or it's like walking across Death Valley. And then it's got to go through bile, which is almost the opposite. It's the Antarctic, you know, and you're walking across with a, a, a coat on. So there's a lot of supplements that don't have ability to absorb very well. Um, bile is a emulsifier. So it's a, essentially there for two points. It is to neutralize stomach acid and it is also to emulsify fats. Now, the bile, as far as neutralizing stomach acid, just kind of getting into the nitty gritty, um, your pancreas produces sodium bicarbonate and then is released into the bile duct that then you know gets connected with the liver bile duct, the common bile duct, and then gets released. But what we now know is that our actual bile ducts from the liver actually secrete bicarbonate as well too. They make about 25% of the bicarbonate. So a big portion of, if anybody has stomach acid issues and generally what, what occurs is GERD, acid reflux, right? Oh my gosh, I, and the mainstream thing is you have too much acid, but really what's happening is you're chewing food, it goes down in the stomach, it's gotta get to a low enough pH, which generally drops to pH of two to help basically break down the food. If it doesn't get low enough, when it releases into the small intestine, the body rejects it. It's like, hey, this isn't, this isn't good. And then the acid comes back up. And, and then we think, oh my gosh, I have too much acid, but it's actually a lack of, so it's not, mm. not breaking it down enough. So then in the functional medicine side, we, you know, 18 HCL or apple cider vinegar. But the question really needs to move into, well, why am I lacking stomach acid? And what happens is if your bile is not flowing properly, and there's many things that coagulate that and cause dysfunction, then essentially you don't have a, uh, if the bile's not moving to get released into the small intestine, when the stomach acid comes down to neutralize it, your body says, whoa, too much stomach acid. I need to decrease the stomach acid. And so then we you know, want to increase it, which is, is good, but we need to take the next step and really think it's the lack of bile flow. So we need to increase bile flow. So bile has many things now they've shown in the literature. There's some really cool stuff. If anybody's interested in digging in, there's this thing called the blood bile barrier and essentially means that when toxins can't dump into the bile that you get essentially leaky gut of the liver and the mm. cells open up the tight junctions and then those toxins go into the bloodstream and then it affects endothelial cells of your kidneys of your lungs skin this is where rashing itching comes in and it's all just basically because the liver is not draining so the bile has many functions the most notable ones is for emulsifying fats and then also neutralizing stomach acid but more and more research just the last couple of years has listed more more and more functions to it that it, it actually acts as a communication um, once it gets in the gi it communicates back to the liver what to do and in in the bile you have bile acids that end, or end up turned into bile salts. And essentially, the just to finish some of the science on the bile, um, where bile acids and bile salts come from is cholesterol. So 70 to 80% of your bile is, uh, or 70 to 80% of your cholesterol is turned into bile. Cholesterol is also used to manufacture sex hormones like pregnenolone, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, that stuff. But the vast majority of cholesterol is actually bile acids. So you make these bile acids in the liver called primary bile acids. And that would be like the uh, cholic acid, the keno deoxycholic acid. And then those get dropped into the gut. And then inside the small intestine, our microbiome, our bacteria will convert these primary bile acids into secondary bile acids. And then uh, one of them to, to note, and you know of this one, uh, it's called UDCA, U-D-C-A. And then when it conjugates with taurine, the new name is called TUDCA, T-U-D-C-A. Mm. And it's a secondary bile acid. And TUDCA stands for torso deoxycholic acid. And if, and if the listener is like, okay, where the heck is Jay going on this? If there's one thing that I'm going to recommend because of your inflammation summit that you're doing, which is so important to understand, mm -hmm. TUDCA, which our body naturally makes from bile acids, converts into a secondary bile acid, that is the bile acid that is anti-inflammatory. That is the bile acid that will protect cellular damage. It will basically protect the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is in pretty much all our eukaryotic cells, from damage. So if you have liver damage, 
your body making Tudka will protect that. Well, vast majority of people have poisons and toxins that then mess up the microbiome. So then you're not making these secondary bile acids. If you're not making them, all the other bile acids are super oxidative. They're very stressful. So if the bile is not moving, you have all this oxidative damage that's happening. And if you can create movement and motion in that GI tract, in the bile ducts, and then have the microbiome to actually break that down and turn it into an anti-inflammatory, you know, bile acid like Tudka, I mean, that is a game changer. I'm maybe jumping ahead a little bit, but um, that's just, I guess, some of the science on it. Yeah, and I definitely want to come back to Tudka. And, and so basically, when you have a healthy microbiome, you produce these natural bile acids. But when you have dysbiosis, you're not producing them and your bile can be very sluggish, very rich in cholesterol and lacking the key bile salts. And that creates kind of this sluggish flow, which can back up. And, you know, obviously then we can, we can have things like, uh, like gallstones and stuff like that, that can be created. And I want to circle back to that. We also know that bile is actually antimicrobial too. So it helps to sterilize. We know that, for example, there are certain types of pathogens that love acid and other ones that love more of an alkaline environment. So when they go in, uh, you know, particularly think about things like, uh, like streptococcus coming from our, our mouth should normally be killed in the stomach by the stomach acid, right? And then there are other bacteria that are acid loving bacteria, right? That can make it through that. Uh, like for example, um, uh, lactobacillus, right? So those love acid, but then they don't necessarily love the alkaline environment, right? And so then bile can come in and kind of help keep things in check. And we have such a an, an epidemic of bacterial overgrowth, particularly small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And this really comes down to issues going on with stomach acid and bile flow, because that should help regulate those things. And so with Tudka, what you're saying is this, we taking this helps to thin that bile so that it can flow real effectively and it also has anti-inflammatory elements. Can you explain that in more detail? Yeah, yeah. Just to highlight, I mean, you're exactly on, David. Um, so literature has shown that having a lack of bile production and a lack of bile flow is a precursor of SIBO. So if you increase the bile movement, you basically can help clear out SIBO, which has been a really big, you know, issue come to come to topic the last six years. Um, the other thing that's been shown too is it will kill C. diff. So those that, you know, are getting C. diff and it's like, oh, I can only do a, you know, um, what's that fecal enema, you know, transplant to, yeah. to do the C. diff. It's like, well, if you really just have proper bile flow, you, you won't get C. diff like that. That's the natural, the natural production of it. So yeah, the big, the big thing is looking at how do you keep the movement? So what you mentioned is if, if the bile's backed up, then you end up with more cholesterol, which you're completely right. Cause it's actually a, if you convert cholesterol into a primary bile acid and it sits there, it's a negative feedback loop and it says no more converting cholesterol. So people that have high cholesterol generally have issues in this liver hmm. issue area and movement. Yeah, because it's very, these primary bile acids are very oxidative and super stressful. So you don't want to keep making more and more and more if they're not moving. When they actually move, then the body will be converting cholesterol into these bile acids. It gets to the gut and then, yeah, the microbiome should make secondary ones that are then super beneficial. A lot of the bile acids, bile salts will get absorbed at the end of the small intestine. Some will get into the large intestine and then some will even get absorbed like where a coffee enema gets absorbed, the hemorrhoidal veins and go back to the hepatic portal vein system. But most of the bile acids are re re recycled at the end of the small intestine and back in. Um, but Tudka, the body naturally makes. But what I found clinically is that if you are uh, not well, your body doesn't have a lot of Tudka. And I think it's because of the messed up microbiome. So by taking Tudka, which your body naturally makes, I mean, Tudka has been, we had uh, one of my friends who's a researcher now with us, Dr. Nick Ellenson, who you'd know as well. He put together, he, he researched Tudka for like three months straight. And he's got, a, I think it's 26 pages now on all the things. So Tudka, if you take it, and let's say you take a capsule of Tudka in the morning and you eat breakfast, it will mimic as if you're intermittent fasting as far as brain cognition. So just some random, crazy, awesome thing. It's been shown to be beneficial against the C word, uh, uh, cardiovascular, 
issues. If you take it and have a stroke, it'll cause half the damage because it's protective. If you take it afterward, it'll help speed up the healing. It's um, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease. I mean, pretty much um, most things, and I know it's a, a big blanket statement, but actually literature has been shown to support Tudka because of its strong anti-inflammatory and cellular protection effects, which is why it's one of the things I, I definitely wanted to highlight for your summit because it fits into this chronic inflammation, like, and, and it can stop yeah. it. But when you get sick, you don't make it. And so you kind of get into this self-perpetuating cycle where you're not making it, you're making more inflammation. And, you, you, you know, by taking it, you can help what, what one of the things that's shown in literature is to increase the bioflow by 250%. So it'll increase that movement Yeah, and it'll be better quality and it'll, it'll also actually, actually help to get rid of more of the bile acids in the stool, which you want because toxins are in there. So uh, it's just, a, it's one of my favorites for sure. Mm -hmm.